What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I finally did it, I finally found one. I've been looking for a long time and this is what I like to call Hellcat Theory. So I know you guys are wondering, why, why the hell did you do that? Why, like, why did you buy that? Okay, so I'm sure everybody knows by just simply looking at the thumbnail, I did buy an ELSD out of a 10 speed automatic ZL1. This one had like 12,000 miles on it. It was a 2018. It was yellow, like that canary yellow one. So I think they only made that for one year and I think that was a 2018. So I'd have to go back and check, but uh, I did find one locally. Uh, these things are about a thousand dollars. So kind of plays key here. I called Tremec. I got a hold of him and asked him, you know, is the TR6060 upgradable? Because I would like to hang on to my shifting capabilities for as long as I can, no matter what power level I'm at. So I called Tremec and I got a hold of them. They did get back to me. They referred me to a place in, uh, I believe it was Detroit. Lincoln Transmission, shout out guys, because those guys actually, they're, they're, they're pretty good, pretty good people over there. They know their stuff. They took a minute to talk to me and they told me that I was able, you know, obviously once you <laughs> cross that thousand foot pound uh, capability, of, uh, you know, thousand foot pounds of torque, what the OE level is set at, um, there's not gonna be any warranty, but they did say that there is some headroom left in the transmission. They can put some stronger gears and that kind of light bulb. I was like, okay, all right. So if you can put stronger gears in there, can we mess with the gear ratio? Uh, he did say yes. We can do pretty much whatever we wanted. There is uh, a lot of options that we have. Um, I did ask him how much. So basically I would have to take the transmission out, put it in a crate, ship it to them, or take it to them. But I, I would definitely ship it to them. And they told me that it would be just a little over $2,000. That's not bad, still beats a sequential. Uh, I think you can get a used sequential for anywhere from like eight to ten thousand dollars And then you're gonna have to have the time to mock it up install put it in blah blah So as you can see that can get pretty expensive really really fast So after reviewing and going through and looking at all the models uh, Those of you that say oh the gearing's not the same or the gearing's the same across all Camaros you're Wrong, it's not uh, Even the ZL1 the 1LE and the ZL1 was it, it is the same up until sixth gear uh and you're you'll see that here in just a little bit because i did find this really really cool tool but i wanted to cover why i did this in the first place so anyways everybody raves hellcat this hellcat that hellcat this hellcat's running a 260 260 to one ring gear and i believe i'm not sure about the red eye but i believe that's what they're they're running the same ring and pinion setup so 260 to one this would be a 285 to one they have eight gears but i have six so their eight gears are going to be shorter um a little bit taller than the 10 speeds i'd have to go through the ratios gear by gear to check but uh this is going to be even taller yet because i'm minus two gears but every gear is substantially taller uh, so this will probably be about Hellcat equivalent. So um, anybody that has a uh, manual ZL1, back me up here. I don't need backup, but back me up here just for my own peace of mind. First gear is useless. It's freaking useless. It is pretty much like a granny gear. Uh, it, you know, it's so easy to burn the tires off in this car in first gear. And usually I am, uh, I would say, before I get under the traffic light, I'm, st I'm shifting into second or maybe even sooner. So the simple fact is, you know, even like other supercars, uh, which me personally, I believe ZL1 is a supercar. I didn't think so until I own one, but that's a different video for a different day. Other people, like take Lamborghini for instance. Uh, if you increased the height of the gears, so you make them taller, you make them longer, they're gonna go faster speeds in between shift gear, shifting gears. That's all that jargon means. But if you make the gears taller, they're gonna be more usable. Uh, the only downfall to this I can see being uh, 
is it's gonna maybe stress the clutch a little bit more but you know if we got to replace the clutch then that's what we got to do anybody that has a manual zl1 they can testify for this especially when you put more power to it it's geared so low that it's just useless so in order to make use of these gears and to put a lot less stress and shock on the 20 inch supercar threes this is the way to go this is the move to go also on the other side of that going from the tire back to the front of the car the supercharger now from the factory this has a roots blower and as everybody knows the most common blower if you're going to upgrade to it's not a whipple it's not a screw it's the magnuson 2650 which is also a roots blower so leaving myself some headroom uh we all know that roots blowers are the most efficient like they make the most power off idle so basically like a thousand you know up to about 2500 rpms anything beyond that they're very very inefficient still making power uh but they're inefficient and they cause a lot or generate a lot of heat uh so if we wanted to go magnuson 2650 this is probably the way to go because if i did ship the transmission off it was going to be about 2500 dollars and a six month wait i didn't want to do that plus uh we'd have to go through and gear by gear we'd have to pick what what we wanted to do in order to you know match up with that 373 so this is like kind of the best way to do this because i can pretty much affect all six forward gears in the transmission in the same way at the same level in the same ratio so uh with just changing this one component it's a little bit less than half the cost of changing the transmission and um you still get to keep that factory you know th these differentials are rated up to like 1450 foot pounds of torque you know from the factory so uh my only concerns are is the you know is any kind of computer or any kind of control module going to freak out and spaz out on me obviously i'm gonna have to go back on the dyno and get this thing get the speedometer and everything recalibrated but uh that's that's fine because i think this is going to be a good way to go now i am moving a lot like a substantial amount so um the way it was basically explained to me that if you want to figure out how they get uh you know i'd be moving from like a 373 to one ratio down to a 285 to one ratio so basically how it was explained to me that if you want to figure out the ratio uh the 373 part is basically just the ring gear the big gear with uh you know the amount of teeth divided by the pinion gear it's the small shaft gear that is has a lower amount of teeth uh now you can get different size pinion different size ring to come up with pretty much the same ratio uh you know the amount of teeth each way but you know it's it's up to you and i would say your experience what you need the car for uh you know the weight the tire size it, a lot of this stuff comes into play here so and i've never seen this done so this is going to be a good way to go uh i do know that i have seen other zl1s with the 10 speed they go but they're changing the the differential on the rear end completely uh whether they need something stronger i don't know but uh the only crappy part about this is from chevrolet is what i hear is that the pinion is welded in as long along with the ring gear i believe is welded in or it's just one piece so if you want to change the ratio in these elsds you can't really you, you just got to basically go with what the factory made now you got three options uh in my car i just uh coupe that's the six speed manual you can have the 373 to one obviously in the 10 speed coupes you got the 282.85 to one and in the convertible automatics you have a 2.77 to one so uh there's three to choose from there but i was kind of playing with this tool that trimic has online i know i keep bringing it up i know i keep talking about we'll get to it here in just a second but the way it's explained to me was for every rotation on the differential the yoke going in the pinion gear for every time that makes one rotation the 
carrier on the outside, so pretty much the CV shafts are gonna make whatever that is. So it's gonna be a 2.85 rotations to the one rotation going into the pinion. That's how that works. So basically, a differential just takes the energy or the movement and takes it going from the engine straight back and then it shoots it out to both tires. So, so nonetheless, uh, I will say this, I'm gonna say that the resolution on StreamYard kind of sucks. So I'm gonna make uh, myself as small as I can and I'm gonna make the screen as, well, the, the Trimix screen as, as large as I can and I'll just bounce back and forth when I need to. So, all right, let's get into it. So this is a gear ratio calculator and pretty much this takes everything into account that it needs to as far as the transmission and everything goes. So. Um, how we work this is you're going to take, and this has engine RPM, we'll get to that here in a little bit, axle ratio, obviously that's the rear differential, tire height, and you get the tire height if you go all the way down to the bottom here. So we'll have, oop, we'll have, my mouse jumped around on me here. Uh, so we're going to type in 305, because I got a 305, 30, 20 in the back. And then we're going to go 30, and then we'll do the wheel diameter of 20. We're gonna hit calculate. That's gonna give you your tire height. So boom. We'll just take that whole number there. We're gonna copy that. And then we'll paste it right there. We'll just do 2,000. Uh, yeah, 2,000 RPMs, that's fine for now. So we'll go 3.73, because that's the ratio I have right now. And basically, I'll drop a picture of this up here. This is a ZL11LE, and as we all know, uh, here, hang on one second, I will plug this in, 2.29 for first year, 1.61 for second, 1.21, that's pretty close, second and third, but I do love the difference between second and third, I probably third gear is my favorite. Uh, so we got fourth gear, which is one to one. That's going to be the year that they use on the dyno. And yes, this is all going to change when um, I install this rear differential. So there'll have to be another calculation or another formula to figure out how to get all that uh, back in sync. So we got 0 0.82 for 0.82 to one for fifth year, and then the ZL1 1LE has 0.68 to one uh to one for six gear but we all know that here i'll just plug this in so we'll roll with it for now so calculate the speed 373 so at 2000 rpms we are going to be doing in sixth gear 63.82 miles per hour now uh we all know pretty much uh now i did shoot a video here hang on one second i will do this we all know that the zl1 has a 0 0.5 to 1 which is a taller gear so it's going to be doing more speed at lower rpms and i think for the road if you want to be roll racing and you want to make big power the regular zl1 transmission is what you want so let's do 0 0.51 let's hit calculate speed again 85 so that's about right because here i'll do 1900 and boom check out this video <laughs> almost exactly 2000 rpms so that solidifies right there you can see the tack was like just under 2000 RPM. So I'm gonna guess it's like high 1800s, low 1900s, somewhere in there. There, there isn't a digital readout in the ZL1. So 0.51, 1900 RPMs with 373 gear rear end put us at 80 miles an hour. It was probably, that's, 
very, very accurate for what it is. So let's do it like this. So now I want you to pay attention, not just to six gear itself, but if you pay attention to all gears across the board, how much this is gonna drop. So this is what I was explaining to Derp, Derpzilla. So it, it, just pay attention here and I think you're gonna be shocked. So let's do uh, 2.85. Calculate speed. Boom, look how much that jumps up. So, usually I don't shift out of first gear until about 2,500. So let's hit calculate speed again. 31 miles an hour. 31 in first gear. That's right before I shift. So my calculations of what I'm understanding with a 20 inch wheel, uh, on the supercar threes, I think this is going to put it in a much, much more streetable manner. Uh, second gear at 2,500 RPMs again, uh, going to be doing 45. That's, that's, that's very manageable. So I think I can cruise around town at about third gear right now. I'm kind of ping ponging back and forth between fourth and fifth depends 35 mile an hour zone. I'm using fourth. Uh, 45 mile an hour zone, I'm I'm like right on the edge. So, you know, I'm in fifth. And that kind of sucks because I only got one more gear to go. Uh, but yes, if you just check it out now, that's 2,500 RPMs. So, let me get back at you here. This is 2,500 RPMs. So, my red line is 6,500, but it will go up to 7,000 now that my car has been tuned. So if I take it up to 6,500 RPMs, and I want you to pay attention, like I said, across the board, not just six gear, because six gear is impressive, but let's pay attention to all the gears. So pretty much, and if I go up to 6,500, which is factory red line, that's gonna put me, calculate speed, boom. <laughs> I'm topping first out at 80 miles an hour. Second gear, I'm topping out at 114. Thirds, 152. Fourth is 184. Fifth is 225. Oh my God. And sixth gear, 361.93 miles an hour. But we all know that you're not, you're, you know, sixth gear is so far out there that, you know, even the Z01 1LE had to, had to make it a shorter gear to make it usable. So maybe if you wanted to swap out this ring and pinion um, to a ZL1 1LE, let's just try it here. So a ZL1 1LE, let's go uh, 325, 30, 60, 19, calculate, I'm gonna take it, copy, and then we'll paste it recalculate the speed 354 so that would still that would still put you at a very very usable range even in the z011 le you can argue that the 19 inch wheel is faster but obviously i'm making almost a thousand horsepower so that 19 to 20 difference that's chump change that's not gonna matter here so so if we go back to standard z01 361 um yeah yeah oh no i'm sorry i did i didn't uh i didn't calculate for the 0.68 sixth gear um so yes but i mean you can go back through and recalculate that and refigure it if you want to but pretty much this i just wanted to show you guys uh the reasoning uh kind of why i'm doing this and um yeah, it's not like it's a track car. I just think that it's just geared way too low. Yeah, now that I've added about, you know, 250 or whatever horsepower, uh, almost 300, this car is a, uh, it, it's not gonna have a problem uh, moving, you know, that 19 to 20 inch uh, tire difference. So um, I think we can pretty much 
throw that out the window but yes uh, pretty much I'm making this video in order for you guys to have any questions any comments we'll be doing this very very soon stay tuned um, I got to get a few things set up here I might have to order a couple parts uh, but I definitely need some more warmer weather so which it's coming up here in a few weeks uh, we still have the z one le front end conversion to do so I think that this is going to put this in the, in the sweet spot. I think this is going to make this car perfect. Perfect. What you read on paper and what you see in real life are two very, very different things. So just hang with me. Like I said, this will probably be the internet first. I've never seen this done. So don't forget to subscribe, guys. Like the video. Please, for God's sake, just like the video. Uh, until the next one or until the install video, I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Don't forget to click on the next one because it's going to be good. Take it easy, guys. We'll see you.